Welcome back to another video. Let me show you how fast it is to install this. Today I'll be going over and fully reviewing this stereo. It's by Carpuride. Here's the unit itself. It is seven and a half inches by four and a quarter with a one inch thickness. Has a USB port, AV out, camera in, SD card in, and a mic power, the reset button. This adjusts the brightness automatically. We have an aux cord, it comes with two mounts, a suction cup, which can adjust this way and adjust this way, as well as adjust this way. A power adapter and another mount, which has an adhesive pad, or you can use screws and securely mount it. With an extra pad and a suction cup pad as well. And a pretty in-depth manual. Now let's install it into my 1999 Astro camper van. And welcome to my camper van. We'll be installing it right over there. So I'm thinking right there would be a perfect spot. So you grab the mount, I'd recommend holding it like this, put it into the holes, and you slide up until it clicks. To remove it, you do the opposite. You slide down until it clicks. The back of this has an adhesive to help it stick. Whenever you have it adhered, we just pull this down. So then it's much more secure. We have this powder unit, which I'll be plugging into this part right here. And we'll plug it in right there. I think putting on the windshield is a better location. My car is currently off, but when I plug in the unit, the unit turns on, which is fine. However, most cars, the 12 volt accessories don't turn on until you turn over the accessory. My 1999 Astro van, the accessories are always on. We first have the home button, volume up, volume down, microphone, and the back button. And we have the home and volume right here as well. The Bluetooth to connect to Bluetooth. Brightness, if you wanna change the brightness. And this changes the background. How in the heck do I connect this to my car? Sure, it has an aux cord, but this does not take an aux. So, we have the next best thing. I turn it to 88.1 radio station. Go to FM transmission, 88.1. The fuzzing went away. I'm gonna save that. Onto P1. I'm using an iPhone, so I will be connecting to iPlay or Apple CarPlay. First, we need to go to Bluetooth, press Discoverable. Then go on your phone and press CarPure. Use CarPlay. And just like that, it's automatically connected to my phone. So the audio is currently playing out of the unit. And if you turn up the volume here, so with both the speakers on and the unit on, it kind of sounds like surround sound. So I'm probably gonna keep this speaker on. So that's pretty cool. And of course it has all the apps that an Apple CarPlay should have. Then we can press this microphone. It'll automatically go to Apple CarPlay and pop up Siri. I can't help with that. Garage light off. Hey Siri, garage light on. Okay, done. And it closes automatically because I was not on that previously. Or we can stay on it. Hey Siri, garage light off. Okay, done. That is a pretty cool feature, but I'm probably always gonna be on this page anyways. It also has Android Auto. You can plug in a SD card and access SD card here and the USB as well. Um, you can adjust the equalizers you have auto link, which is for wired screen mirroring, and we have AirPlay. In order to connect to AirPlay, we need to disconnect wireless iPlay. You need to turn off Bluetooth and turn off Wi-Fi and turn on Wi-Fi. Our Puride, enter the password, which is a whole bunch of sixes. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Join, let's slide down, and we can press that screen mirroring button right there. And there you go, there's my phone on that screen. You can go to YouTube, click my video. This is Top Don's battery charger. We have the unit itself, which actually... That's pretty cool. And then you just press this doohickey and stop mirroring. Turn Bluetooth back on and Wi-Fi back on. You gotta press Cap Car Pure Ride on the Bluetooth. Now we connected and now we're back in business. We go to the phone with the little spinny circle thing iPhone wired because I'm using an iPhone and you can press iOS mirror then all you gotta do is plug in your phone then you'll be connected to Autolink 
press trust. There is go to YouTube video, press play, and now it plays. But for some reason, the audio is not working through the docks. So you gotta go through CarPlay and the audio is delayed. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Plug in the USB from the back. Plug in your phone. Your phone is now charging. Now we got it connected just through the wire. So my unit did not come with a camera because I don't really need one. Because I got that. If you want to see how I installed that, I'll link that video right down below. Let's go ahead and go through the settings. We got the language. Change the color of these suckers, which is kind of cool. Cyan yellow, blue, green, or just turn them off. I like cyan. We got the device speaker, so if you don't want the audio playing from this device, you can turn that off. For y'all not in America, you can turn it to your right side drive, so then I'll put all this stuff to the right side. You can restore this to factory settings, and you can check out your system version. We can set up our Wi-Fi here, change our channel if we need to. If I don't go to the car, which talks about the rear view camera, which we don't have here. So pros and cons, I'm gonna start with the pros. This is a pretty cool device. It is a small versatile unit that you can install into any car. And in my case, it's perfect because these Astrovans do not have a direct double din replacement. And there's a lot of older cars that are just the same. One thing I find very cool, let me go and take this off. If I was laying in my van, it's like so. I could install it right there. Then I have a mini screen I can watch movies on. So that would be kind of cool. That's not too shabby. I like how it has wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. The AirPlay feature is kind of cool. It's very cool that this can connect via FM transmission. Very nice. And it's nice how it has its own audio. If you wanted to, you can connect an aux out and connect a whole different speaker system. I do like how small the screen is because it's not too invasive on my view. And finally, the graphics look pretty good. The colors are relatively deep and relatively sharp. And I really like how I can mount it just about anywhere I need to. If I want to mount it up here, I can mount it up there. And one of the biggest pros is the fact that you can set this up in 10 seconds. It is a pretty great unit. Now, the cons. My biggest con is that it does not auto turn off. And that's not really its fault, it's the car's fault. However, maybe if it had a feature to turn off after not being used for maybe 15 minutes, that'd be pretty cool. But for now, I'm gonna have to keep unplugging and plugging in the unit or turning it off by the power button, which is not really that big of a deal. The next con is the wire. A little ugly and annoying, but what you could do, shove it behind the dash and go all the way around the dash and plug it in so the wire would be a lot less visible. The Autolink audio for some reason isn't connecting right for me. Um, I think that is a big con, but I honestly am never gonna use that for my own uses. I'll just be using Apple CarPlay. Another downfall is that you can't add any apps to this unit, although it is an Android unit. But once again, my main use is gonna be the Apple CarPlay. If this video helped you out and you like this portable head unit, then go ahead and use the link down below. That'll be directly supporting me and this channel, and I'd really appreciate it. This is Chris Automotive. I always appreciate any respect to another. I'll see you next time.